Hope everyone's doing well. Um, if you're visiting with us, we're really pleased that you're here. I encourage you to come back every chance that you have. Um, before we get started in class, let's uh, go to God in prayer. Our dear Father, we're thankful for all of the things that you do for us each day. Father, help us not to overlook those things, and we thank you for uh, the life that we have. And, and we know at times it's more challenging than others, uh, but we know, Father, that we can have the peace that passes understanding if we walk with you and we, we trust in you uh, to take care of us. We thank you for all the times that you have, and we thank you for all the times that you will. Father, we pray that you would be with all of us now and all of our classes, Father, um, that we might uh, listen and that we might uh, be attentive to your word, that we might apply the things that you would have us to know and have us to do um, in our lives so that we might be more effective and, and better Christians in service uh, to each other and to the world, Father, and in the way that we, we walk and worship you. We thank you for all that you do, particularly we're mindful of your son and what he means to each of us, and it's in his name that we pray, amen. All right, well, it's good to be back. Uh, I want to thank Brian for uh, covering uh, for me last week while I was out of town, and um, it's good to be back with you this morning. Lord willing, I'm absolutely planning to wrap up Joseph this morning, so... Um, nothing against Joseph, but I think this will be the second, second full week um, on Joseph. So um, we're going to move past and we'll have a, another example next week. And what's, the, what's been the topic of our class this quarter? Unity, right? So we've been talking about unity. And a lot of talk about unity in the world. And there's a lot of dissension in the world, a lot of examples of not having unity in the world. And so I wanted to talk about unity and what that looks like and what that looks like you know, in the church uh, as well. So we had a class or two that just talked about um, what one thing or characteristic of Christians that's really important, it's a four letter word, uh, starts with L, that we read about in 1 Corinthians 13. Okay. You know, there's always one in every crowd. Okay, so there's charity, all right, or love. Um, and when you look at 1 Corinthians 13, good to see you, buddy. Um, when you look at 1 Corinthians 13, there's a lot of good examples of what love is and we talked about how when discord is present love is absent I mean if you really look at those it's pretty hard not to have unity when love is involved because it's it's patient it's long-suffering it doesn't seek its own it's not puffed up right it's it's humble it doesn't rejoice in evil, right? I mean, there's, there's so many things there in 1 Corinthians 13, right around in verse 4. And so when we look around and we feel when things are starting to come off the rails, whether it's outside the church or in the church, right? Because we're just people. I mean, we're just, just because we're together doesn't mean that we're impervious to being human beings, right? And we... And people come from the world, and we're all at different levels of maturity. We're all at different levels, you know, in our walk as, as Christians. And, you know, we're, we're all learning. And so there, there are going to be times of struggle. There's going to be times of, of, of trial. And we need to expect that. Even those who you live with, right? I mean, these are people that they're your family and you love. And, you know... Now, kids didn't pick their parents, and, you know, not all good parents didn't necessarily pick their kids either, but, I mean, you know, even people who picked each other, there's times where it's trying, right? And so that's, that's the human walk, and we have to expect that uh, a bit, but it's important that we stay focused. So we looked at Joseph, 
in Genesis 37. And in Genesis 37, um, we looked at, you know, at the time of this particular passage, in verse 2, he was 17 years old. And we looked in verse 2 there where he kind of told on his brothers, and we quickly realized that who's Joseph's father? Jacob. And, and, and how did Jacob feel about Joseph? It's his favorite, right? I mean, he, he, I believe he loved his other kids, and we can see that by, you know, he was concerned about them when they had gone off, you know, with the flocks and stuff, and he actually sent Joseph out later and said, you know, go check on them and bring a report back to me, you know, or make, just make sure they're doing okay, right? Um, and so he loved the other brothers, but he really loved Joseph. And what's one of the reasons we know an example of why or how we know he really loved Joseph, other than it's saying he loved Joseph, but he gave him a special coat, right? He gave him this coat of many colors. So, I mean, if it's not obvious enough, I mean, is it not obvious among, like, siblings? If mom and dad kind of a little bit favor one over the other or a certain person, right? And then, you know, it stuck a coat on the kid, right? So, I mean, if it wasn't, if it wasn't obvious, here he is in his, in his bright coat of many colors that says, here I am. Okay, it's just kind of a reminder that dad really loves this kid. Okay, now we also learn that what kind of special or what was going on with Joseph, um, you know, in verses uh, 5 through 8 and in verses 9 through 11. Joseph shares a couple of what that he had? A couple of dreams, right? And what was the nature of these dreams? Okay. Okay, his brothers were going to serve him, bow down to him. And what was kind of the response of, of his family? They didn't really, they didn't appreciate it, right? And what particular emotion is called out over and over in the verses that we read? Is their feeling towards him? Hatred, right? And it said it just grew more and more. I mean, just hatred. This isn't just like a little dislike or a little, I mean, they really just began to hate their brother. Right? So in Genesis 37, right around um, verse 18 is where we left off, okay? Genesis 37, 18 through 20, and it says, now when they saw him afar off, now this is after Jacob had sent Joseph out and said, go check on your brothers and bring a report back to me. And Joseph didn't find him right away. He, he was out looking and he saw a man and he said, have you seen my brothers? And he's like, yeah, I think he went down, they went over to Dothan. And so, you know, Jacob's, I mean, Joseph's trying to, to find them. And it says, now when they saw him afar off, even before he came near to them, what happened? What was going on? They were conspiring what? To kill him. Okay, so we talked about this one verse last week. How is it that you get to a place that when you see your brother afar off, it says even before he came near, they were thinking about killing their brother. How can we kill this guy? What? What must have been going on in their heads? Think about walking around together with the flock and everything else. What was probably some of the conversation that was going on among them? After they had heard about these couple of dreams and everything else. Yeah, my guess is he's, he's the youngest son. He's 17 years old. And we're going to bow down to him. And the, the point is, they're probably talking about him. You, you know that the topic of Joseph had to come up when they're out there walking around. And because and in verse 19, you know this is fresh on their minds. Because how? Look at 19. Then they said to one another, look, the dreamer is coming. Here he comes, the dreamer. 
right? And you can see just the hatred. What are, what are some other words you might think of there? They're, they're what of their brother? Disgust, what was envious, jealous, right? So we're going to talk about that in a, in a moment. Come therefore, verse 20, let us now kill him and cast him into some pit. And we shall say, right, they got to have a story. Some wild beast has devoured him. We shall see what will become of his dream. What's going on here? So if they throw him into a pit and he dies, what are they thinking about the dreams? Ain't going to happen. Why wouldn't it? Why, how, how would throwing him in a pit and him dying? Because right? he's going to be dead, right? He's not going to rule over us if he's dead. I mean, we'll fix this. All right? Here's, here's a way to, to make this happen. Okay, in verse 20. Look at Genesis 6, 5. Can someone read Genesis 6, verse 5? Okay. So when God, in Genesis 6, verse 5, looked on man and saw that every thought of man was evil how often continuously what did god do yeah he caused the flood to come right and it killed all but eight people and look at look at joseph's brothers they're just obsessed with him Okay, and they're, obs they're, they're obsessed um, with trying to you know, fix this situation, and they're filled with jealousy and hatred towards their brother. Yeah. Yeah, they, in their minds, uh, 1 John 3, uh, Jody was saying, uh, you know, they've committed the crime, right? If you, if you hate your brother, you're a murderer already. Look at Proverbs 6.18. Proverbs 6.18. Again, we read this earlier uh, on the first week of class. It talks about things that God hates. But what does Proverbs 6.18 say? Okay. So a heart, you know, that, that devises evil plans, wicked plans, and feet that, you know, are quick to run to mischief. God, God hates that, where we focus and we focus and we just focus on evil, right? And we, we just, we let it take over our minds. They, they had, I have no doubt that they hadn't been talking about it. They, and not that, hey, when he comes to find us, they were just about how much they can't stand him. And as soon as they saw him, it all clicked. This is opportunity. I mean, this is opportunity. He's by himself. He's away from dad. Right? He's away from the protector. He's singled out. This is our chance. All right? Yeah, yeah, I mean, this wasn't an accident where he, you know, he fell into the pit. And then, uh, 
And look at Romans 1, 28 through 32. Could someone read that? Romans 1, 28 through 32. This will be the last passage on this point, but there's a, a different point here. What does that say? Okay, so thank you. So he says, God will give people over to what? A debased mind, right? He'll, he'll let them deceive themselves. He'll, he'll let them, and he talks about, there's a whole list of things there, but particularly applicable to this morning is, we said envy, and right after envy in here, what was the next one? Murder, right? And he says, so you know, the point that I want to make here is, is God's not going to keep us from doing that today, even. Right? We can get ourselves to a place where we're so consumed about something or someone or some situation. And we just keep playing the tape, playing the tape, playing the tape in our head. And we get caught in a loop and it just keeps winding us up further and further and further that our thinking just goes off the rails, he'll let us go there. I mean, if we don't stay focused on what's important, and we don't stay focused on Christ, and we don't stay focused on the things in 1 Corinthians 13, I mean, it says God is what? Love. How patient and long-suffering and forgiving and all of those things is God towards us? I mean, just look, look at the stuff that's going on in the world. I mean, are there not times where you just sit there and kind of think occasionally? Like, I, mean, I don't know what God's waiting on at some level. I mean, he's still waiting on those who will come to him because he's patient. I mean, I look around sometimes and I just think, I mean, some of the terrible things that go on. Just terrible things. And I, I don't even see the worst things that go on. All right? And just the way you know, that people treat children and harm children and, and use kids, I mean, who are just innocent, right? I, I don't know, I can't wrap my head around that, and yet God is willing, you know, he's waiting that all might come to him. Okay, that, that's a patience and a love. You know, there will be a day of justice. There will be a day of reckoning. But, you know, they hadn't dealt with that hatred in their hearts. Right? That's the point I want to make here is they, they hadn't dealt with it. And if you don't deal with the jealousy or the envy or the resentment, right? Envy is a strong word. Jealousy might be a strong word. What about resentment? What just about, you know, those little things? It's like a... Like a a burr in the saddle, not that any of us ride a horse too often, some do, uh, but you know, some sand in your shoe, just that thing that you just, it's just there, and every step it reminds you, I'm here, right? I'm the one that you don't like, I'm the one that you've got just a little bit of something every time you see me, every time you interact with me. We, we have to deal with that, right? You don't deal with that resentment it becomes your issue, right? That's, that's in your shoe. You, you need to take it off, dump it out. You know, not, not keep it in there. You need to, you need to address that. What, what emotion is hatred kind of rooted in? When, when, you, when they get all wrapped up in Joseph and they get all, what's, 
What's another emotion that's really playing there? There, it's a really hard question to ask. What? Yeah, an, emo an emotion, they're fearful. They're afraid of Joseph. Right? What are they, what are they afraid of? That he's better, you know, and that he might be more powerful, that he's better, that they might be less than. He might get more inheritance, so even his, you know, there, there's a fear of that. What about even with their dad? What are they fearful of between themselves and, and Joseph? With Jacob. That he's, that they're not loved as much. Right? That am I not as lovable? Does dad not love me? You know, and I'm fearful of that. And when we get fearful of things, the next thing is usually aggression. Okay? When people, when people are afraid of something, you see aggression. And you have to stop and ask, you know, what are they fearful of? Well, they're fearful, fearful that they're not good enough, that they're not as worth as much as Joseph, that, that they're going to be less powerful than Joseph, you know, that he's smarter than they are, that dad loves him more, that, do we do any of that stuff in the church? How might that show up in the church? What, what might be, people be fearful of with each other that gives Satan a chance to get a foothold. So I'm, I'm afraid that maybe I don't fit in. I see somebody else who just seems to be, I mean, you know, if any of us have even gone, you know, to high school, seventh grade, you don't have to go far, okay? And you see little so-and-so who's the center of the world and the universe, Okay, in class, am, 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 you know, why does she have all of that talent? Why can she run fast and be on track? Or why is he the best whatever? I mean, even down to, you know, why can't I write as neatly as, as she can? I mean, these are things that when you, when you talk with your little kids, they get wrapped around the axle. Do they not? I mean, you know, if you think back, that we're constantly comparing ourselves to each other? Why can't I speak like that? Why can't I preach like Brian? Why can't, you know, somebody do this? Or why am I not as good of a... And we can get jealous and we can get fearful that maybe I'm not good enough. Maybe I'll never be good enough. And that fear can turn into a little bit of resentment could even turn into hatred. There's just a, it keeps building on itself, right? And even if you go back, who was Jacob's father? Isaac, and who was his brother? Esau. Well, how was Jacob and Esau? Between Isaac and, and Jacob, how did, how did Isaac feel about Jacob versus how he felt about Esau? Yeah. They, they see all this, right, this favoritism, and it just keeps, you know, it can happen. Go ahead.
No, it wasn't a joke. Yeah. Rachel. All right, I'm going to need two volunteers. You don't have to come up. You can stay right in your seats, and there could be something in it for you. Okay? And this isn't going to work as well on the Internet, so I just apologize. You're going to have to you know, give me just a couple minutes here. Um, and I'm not going to say names because it is across the whole Internet, and who knows who in the world is watching. Okay? So, but I need two volunteers. You can sit right in your chair. Okay, we've got, we got Becky. Oh, crap, I just said I'm not going to say names. <laughs> we have uh, Beatrice. And we have someone over here. Okay, so we have someone and someone. All right. So someone on my left side. <clears throat> I'm going to offer you, I have $10 here. Okay, so I have 10 $1 bills. And I'm going to offer you a dollar, okay? I'm going to offer you a dollar, and if you accept this dollar, I'm going to give this person over here nine dollars. Um, but that's the deal. <laughs> do you want? Do you want the deal? Okay, no deal. All right. Are there two others? Do I have two other people? Okay, we got one here. Somebody else? Okay, we got one here. Okay. I'm going to offer you $2. Okay, and the other person gets $8. Will you take the deal? All right, so what was, let's go back to the beginning. So what was your thought process? You're getting 10%, all right? Like, that doesn't seem fair, okay? It doesn't seem fair. And what was, which is 98% of the time what I get if I do this, okay? And what, and, and usually on the first time it's almost 100%. I've never done it on 100 the first time where I don't get that on the first time. And then people start thinking about it. So, the, so what, were, what went through your mind? What if they were an enemy? Would you take the deal? Yeah, I mean, or, or what if, you know, I don't know what your relationship is. Do you guys have a relationship? Could you even say each other's name? So you don't, you don't know, you don't know her, right? She, you know, she could be, you know, yes, yeah, she, she could be crazy, right? Um, what I want to get at is, is um, a sense of fairness. As humans, we, we have this whole thing in our head that everything has to be equal. Like, so if you have a talent and I don't have that talent, instead of me just being happy for you that you have that talent, there's a little bit of, well, why don't I have that talent? Right? And should I expect to have every talent that you have? Should I expect to have everything in life that you have? Right? Should I expect to have the children that you have? Right? Well, how did you get a boy and a girl? Okay? And I've got nine boys or nine girls. Or how come your children are healthy? 
Or how come, you know, your wife this, or your husband that, or your job, or your family, or why don't you have an addiction? Right? We think that somehow that everything needs to equal out among us. And that when it doesn't, it's an opportunity. You know what? Can I be happy that my brother has a coat of many colors? Am I fed? Am I going cold? Yeah. Does God love me? You know, why, where, where is, you know, where, when we think about God, and why is he blessing you more than he's blessing me? He just gave you, not literally, two dollars. Like, if you, if you step out, coming right to you, you go out this afternoon, you go to a pick, take out or go into a restaurant or go to Walmart or wherever you go, and there's two dollars laying there, are you going to walk over that? If there's one dollar, a dollar bill, some of you might not pick up a dollar. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to dive on it. Okay? I'm going to pick up, like, here's a dollar. Right? Like, it's a free dollar. It's a free two dollars. Right? But we tie it to a condition. It's the human condition. 100%, I get the same thing almost every time I do that. And I see it, you know, uh, in people all of the time. And it's normal. It's, it's, it's the normal reaction. But we're not conscious of it, that we want it to all be equal. We, we have no idea what's going on in people's lives. We have no idea what people have been through. And we are quickly, you know, we, we make everybody else that they've got it made and their life is easy and ours is so difficult. Yours is difficult, you know why? Because life's difficult. <laughs> at times, your life is difficult. But other people's is difficult too. You, you just don't know it. You don't know what's going on in their life all the time. Okay, the point here that I want to make is, is that we need to be careful in the church, right, that we need to celebrate people's successes. We need to celebrate the fact, and even if I could never ever do what you can do, or I'll never have what you have that I think is important, then whether it's a family in a certain way, or the, you know, the perfect relationship as I see it, or the, you know, whatever it might be, or the health that I don't have. Why do you get good health and I don't have good health? If I had good health, I would do those things too. But what do you have? Right? What has God given you? And what God gives us all, God never promised we were all going to have the same thing here. What did he give us that's equal to all of us? Salvation. Salvation. So no matter what your earthly situation, no matter what your talents, no matter how old or young or whatever you are, or if your ears work or they don't work or your eyes or whatever, he gives us salvation. Salvation is to all. What's greater? What is it worth if you gain the whole world and what? Lose your own soul. You know, Joseph's brother's like, what are you focused on? He's your brother. So dad loves him. Does that mean that dad doesn't love you? Yeah, you know what? Dad loves him more. You know what? Let's bring, I'm so happy that my dad is, is happy. 
that my dad loves his son. But that anger and that jealousy and that hatred became so overwhelming that they threw him in a pit, they made up a story, they put animal's blood on that, and what did they do with that coat? They took it back to Jacob, and they gave him that, and what did they watch his dad do? He mourned for days, months, his son. Can you imagine? What is your love for your father? To know that you're putting him through that kind of pain to lose a child, and to sit there and to watch it day after day after day after day and not say anything? Talk about a debased mind, a callous heart. I mean, do we see Christians sometimes get to that place? Where we get so locked down on something? We get so entrenched in a position or something that we, we lose our minds. You're killing your father. Yeah, he's not a perfect man. He's messed up sometimes. Did you see his family? Right? Who here comes from a perfect family? My mom was perfect. My dad was perfect. My grandfather was perfect. There's no problems in our family. Seriously? I mean, my family's a mess. We have to overcome stuff. How do you do it? You walk with God. So we need to think about all of those. And you know, I said this is all we're going to do uh, on, on Joseph. So we got the key things out if we need to. But look at verses 21 and 22 in Genesis 37. So what happened? They said, let's throw him in the pit. You know, we'll see what becomes of this little dreamer's dreams. And what's 21 and 22 say? So here's someone who stands up in a crowd, right? One of the brothers says, this isn't right. How easy do you think it was for Reuben to do that? I don't know. He certainly knew the position of his brothers. Do you think Reuben had no jealousy towards Joseph? I mean, do you think that Reuben had no negative feelings? My guess is he did too, at some level, right? I mean, who loves not being the favorite? I mean, I don't want to not be the favorite. You know, there's a part of us, we all want to be the favorite. We all want to be loved. We all want to be appreciated. Okay, you can see it in families. You can see it in the workplace. You can see it, I mean, people fight for position. They'll stab each other in the back in a second to be, you know, the favorite one. But he kind of put that aside, and what was he thinking? He's like, this isn't right. It's not right for our brother. And it's not right for who, did he talk about? The, I mean, think about dad. I mean, let's take him back to dad. Really? We're going we're gonna to shed this innocent blood? Sometimes we have to be the one to stand up. It's not comfortable. I mean, could they not have overpowered Reuben and just killed them both? They could have got their way. I mean, could have killed both of them. Dad, that animal got both of them. Reuben tried to save them. And Reuben went in there, and Reuben got killed too. I mean, that's not that hard.
point here is, you know, when we see crazy things going on, you can't stay quiet forever, right? You could stand in that group of brothers and say nothing and do nothing and just watch your brother be murdered. But you have to stand up against wrong, right? You, you, So it's important, right, that we, we stand up, that we, we celebrate our brothers and our sisters when they're, when they're doing well. I'm excited for people when they do well. I mean, I'm, I'm, just, I'm excited for you when you do well. And even if you do well in something I don't have or I can't do, I'm so thankful that God has blessed us with you. And that you can do that for us, that you can do that for each other, and that I can watch you and see God working in you. I don't worry, you know, humans and fathers aren't perfect. I know deep down, God loves me too. There's enough love from God that he can love you and love me. I don't, I don't have to compete for God's love. And we know he's no respecter of persons, right? He tells us that, that, and we see over and over, right, that when Christ said, go invite those to the wedding feast, right, who are poor, those who are hungry, those who, we're, we're all souls, right? I mean, whether you have good hair like me or you don't, you know, I feel bad for you if you don't have good hair like I do. But it just doesn't matter. Right, so next week, we will we'll talk about and look at um, another example. I'm not going to give it away because I'm going between two right now in my head. Um, that we can take away and we can learn. But unity is important. We need to walk together. We need to support one another. I mean, life's a long time, but I mean, life is short. Right? And I mean, the first quarter is, it's going to be over like this. I mean, the first three months, I can't believe that it's, I mean, it's daylight savings time or whatever, or whatever it is, is next week. Right? I mean, summer's here on the 20th. Um, you know, so I mean, it just, time, time moves. what I say? Spring, whatever it is. You know, I'm really, I'm really, upset that you knew that and I didn't. <laughs> All right. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for your participation this morning. Thank you.